schooling in the UK is hard. Contrary to what a lot of people think, it is difficult. Yeah. Wow. Because there's no shortcuts. There's no, let me just rough it through. You study, you do the work, and you pass or you fail. It's really that simple. Hello everyone, my name is Esther Egravoin and welcome to another interesting episode of The Cruise with Esther. So today I have a special guest with me. Her name is Tony Ajala. She's yeah. actually currently in the United Kingdom. So she's going to be giving us tips, tricks, everything you need to know about studying in the UK. So let's get right into it. I'm going to be introducing our dear Tony here. Hi, Tony. Hi, hi. Good evening. How are you doing? Okay, it's evening here, so I don't know what time is you're in. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, it's morning. Uh, I mean, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, all of the above. I, I'm just going to start by introducing myself. My name is Udoa Tony Ajala. Um, I currently live in the UK. I work as a communications and marketing officer, and I completed my master's lab early this year in May. I'm a mom of one and I'm a wife as well. Yes. Wow. That's good. <laughs> so you said you are working in the UK currently. I migrated from Nigeria to the UK um, in early 2022. January 2022 was when I came to the UK. And prior to that, I've been to the UK a couple of times. I had come before then for my first master's in 2014, but then at the end of 2015, I went back to Nigeria, worked there for a while, then got married, and then my husband and I decided to relocate at the beginning of 2022. So, yes. Okay. Wow. That's good. So, um, where in the UK are you currently? Okay. I stay in, um, in Northampton, and Northampton is part of the is part of the places they call East Midlands. So it's like okay. about an hour, 30 minutes from London. So it's not too far from London, which is somewhere that everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. London is, is very, is a very popular. <laughs> when you say London, everybody knows that. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is, this is UK. Well, this is, a, yeah. I mean, it's a very, is a tourist um, destination. So, yeah. And you mentioned you studied in the UK for your master's degree in 2014. And then you went back 2015. So yes. why did you, okay, if I, before we go, before we dive into that, let's just start by, you know, how is the process like coming to study in the UK? Like what kind of universities do you, you know, how did you select the university that you like to attend? And then the ad admission process, how was it like? Okay. So for the first one I went to, the first university I went to was the University of Leeds. And okay. then, you know, our Naira wasn't this bad, so it was easier. Um, so the University of Leeds and some other schools are part of the Russell Group schools, which are like the top tier schools in the UK. They are like the expensive schools. So, but then how much was school fees was like 4 million Naira. Oh. as expensive as it was then it's about four million and then that that time my dad was paying anyway so um for the admission process i had an agent that helped me with the process but over time i just learned how to do it it wasn't that difficult what you would most likely need most schools this is what they will ask for except you're doing like a special course where you would need to write ielts most universities in the uk do not need ielts okay. um, so you would need your yx certificates make sure you passed english in your yx certificate and you know they don't really recognize neko yet so if it's a situation or whereby you use combined results to get into uni you might have you might have a bit of hiccup here and there so yeah but if you pass english in your yx you're fine because that serves as an equivalent for the ielts and then you would need your university's transcript you would need your um so I came for a master's. So this is master's process. If you okay. are here from undergrad um, study, it's completely different because you have to go through what they call a uh, foundation class, which is like for one year. A lot of um, 
schools in Nigeria offer that those rich schools you see them doing A levels and all those things. Okay, so yeah. To do the one year, so they have affiliate schools in the, Nigeria where you can do the one year there and then come here and start your year one straight up. But for me, oh, I came wow. from my school, so it was my first degree certificate, my transcript. Um, two two reference letters, one for my lecturer and one for my family friend, and then okay. um, two for font, my passport, and then a letter of um, intent, like saying, you know, stating why you wanted to come to study the course, how the course was beneficial for you, all of that. So, sorry. So those were the documents that I provided to my agent, and then they go on to apply to the school okay as at 2014 it wasn't even as easy as it is now to get admission because now a lot of universities have agents of course they are looking for students they are looking yeah, for yeah. Money. they, <laughs> they are looking for money agents. yeah they have a lot of agents stationed in you know all schools have nigerian representatives as far as i'm concerned so um the agent will just lie us with them oh we have this number of admissions Who can, how can you give and all of that the major difference that i noticed for my master's in 2014 and when i applied now in 2022 was now um you do fiscal interviews well no no oh. online interviews yeah when i did my master's first i didn't need to do an interview you know it was seamless but now the school will call you ask you a few questions why you wanted to come to the school i think it was a way to weave off people that they felt were not yeah. competent to actually okay. do a master but is it me, like a video interview or just yeah phone call a, oh okay it was a video interview for me i didn't i obviously this slated me for the interview but when i started talking up to the man as you know, I told him I had done a master's before. He was like, oh, if I've done a master's in the UK before, then I don't need the interview. So it was really, mine was just oh. cut short, right? But I know that they did it for like a couple of other people, especially oh. in the University of Northampton. Yeah, they did that. Schooling in 2014 and 2022. Oh my God. <laughs> experiences. Now, schooling in the UK is hard. Contrary to what a lot of people think, it is difficult yeah wow. because there's no shortcuts there's no let me just rough it through you study you do the work and you pass or you feel it's really that simple yeah but you know being a single girl then it was just me i go to the library when i want i do my assessment i hang out with my friends i join yeah. societies and clubs i was you know having fun and all and then i came out a merit okay but this time around when it was you know from school i'm rushing back home because my husband is taking care of my child while i'm in school yeah (laughs) he's six months old so it was Mm. yeah yeah that's a whole lot it's a whole lot so i didn't have time to hang around school and just with people after class most of the assessments like if you have a group meeting can we do it online? If you can't do it online, then I may not be able to attend. So the dynamics were very difficult, dif- different for me. It was more difficult for me now, but I feel like in that difficulty, I was, because I graduated with a distinction and I don't even know how that happened. Like when I was oh, single, wow. I graduated with a merit. <laughs> but when I, oh, okay. I, <laughs> I was a child, then I graduated with a distinction. Because I feel like, you know, your life is already hard, so yeah the the more work i had it just felt like oh just do the work just do the work yeah that's good but then i was just chilling i was very relaxed like like, let me just pass like i come back from school i'm attending to my child all day in the middle of the night i'm doing assessment and then in the morning i'm going to school again so it was hard but it didn't feel too hard because i was already used to hard like being the the six months old is already hard yeah so, yeah and you don't want to mess it. things up so <laughs> exactly this time around my husband yeah. was paying i was paying it's not it's your money and you don't mm-hmm. want to <laughs> <laughs> i know how that feels <laughs> yeah 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 oh wow 
So um, when you came to study the first time, you were single. So why did you go back instead of like, you know, maybe looking for a job and staying in the UK? Yeah. So when, when I was doing my master's, we used to have all these conversations in class, the first master's. And then, you know, we'll talk about how master's students are really valued in Nigeria as a den. And then, you know, how we're going back after our master's because we have jobs waiting for us. We're going to get excellent jobs and stuff like that. So we thought, right? We thought <laughs> Who was feeding those information for you guys? <laughs> I was like, oh, Nigeria, I'm, I'm sure you guys have like, Nobody was really thinking of staying back. The only people that were thinking about staying back were people that were getting married to white women. Yeah. I'm just, oh. I'm Those are the only people thinking of staying back in a country that's not theirs. We went, I don't even think I ever heard, you know, how people are talking about COS, COS here now. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear, I didn't hear anything about COS. So, it was that's like, the certificate of sponsorship, sponsorship, right? Yeah, which gives you authority, permission to live and work in the UK. I never heard of it. So it just made sense to go back to Nigeria, you know, get a job after I have a master's now, get a job in the field I want and start working and all. And truthfully, I was never one that liked to stay away from family. Like when I first came for my master's, I had insomnia. Like I couldn't sleep. Really? I, wow. I wasn't functioning. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm very, I'm very family oriented. I like having my family around me, you know. I walk into my brother's yeah. room or my sister's room, my mom, we just would talk. So coming here and staying alone, it was difficult. It was extremely difficult. So going back home was, even, was I didn't even feel like, oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. And, you know, I stayed in Nigeria, worked and all of that. If not for the situation that then made it seem like, I think when I made up my mind to leave was after the NSATS, NSATS situation. Yeah. Because oh, okay. that would shoot everybody like, where are we living? Yeah. In this yeah. It was after that, if not, I'll probably should still be in Nigeria because I was never one to leave family. You no. Know? But when you start having children, you have to make better decisions. You have to, oh, of course. <laughs> no, like most people usually say, moving out of Nigeria is <clears throat> mostly because of their kids. Like they want a better life for the kids because if it's just left to you alone, you can always manage yourself, you know, wherever yeah, you are. That's just it. Yeah. That's it. Oh, wow. That, that's great. So what did you study in school? Okay. So for my first master's, I did um, copy communications and public relations. And then for the second one, I did um, business analytics. Yeah. So oh, okay. uh, right now, oh. I, I sort of do both in the company I work, although I'm not employed as a business analyst. I work more on the communication and marketing angle, but when they need like data from our social media platforms for anything, they reach out to me and I get it done for them. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. That's great. And now your family is in the UK. While studying, how were you able to, were you working? Because I know you can work part-time mm -hmm. while, um, while being a student, you know, for a few okay. hours. So were you working while you were studying? So I wasn't working while I was studying, majorly because okay. of my child, because there were times that you'd, um, I wanted to work. I desperately wanted to work. But when you think about the figures, so how much would I pay for someone to watch her? Maybe six yeah. pounds an hour, right? If I will see five pounds, it would be great because most child minders would do six pounds per hour or nursery will probably even do more than that and yeah. then um, how much would i be paid at the office the work i want to go and work mm -hmm. 10 pounds per hour at most 12 so how much am i actually making with all the work that i want to do when when i thought about the maths it wasn't making sense actually although that puts a lot of strain on my um, husband because he then had to do two jobs just to keep us afloat and all yeah. more. we were st still if you think about it if because sometimes i feel like oh i wasn't doing anything but if you sit down and calculate how much i was saving in terms of child care it was a lot of money yeah, yeah. that was one of the reasons why i didn't work although after some time i started selling me spy in school i started mm. yeah, i was just 
trying to make ends meet, trying to have some small change in my my bank card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just tried my best to be afloat. It's not like we were swimming in wealth, but we just managed ourselves for that one year where he was the only one working, and it was a lot of pressure on him. But when I say working, yeah. you know, I was just take some of that pressure off and a lot. Off, of yeah. Oh yeah, that 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 really makes sense because it's it's really very hard combining school work and um, family at the same time because it's just like here in the US too. If you want to get like someone to help watch your child, when you compare how much you earn earn and how much you're going to pay the person, you'll be like, what's I mean, what's left for me? So you just decide to <laughs> to stay, you know? It's yeah, not it's not. What's it's it's not. It's a, it's a whole lot. So, um, like when you first got to the UK, how were you able to navigate your way around and settle in? How, how was it then and now? <laughs> um, so then it was, I think it was pretty much the same. Just that now you have so many people. Yeah. <laughs> <It was pretty much. laughs> and in my class, we were just six Nigerians at that, that time. But now the masters are just finished. At least it's let's say sixty percent of the students were so Nigerian, so it was really nice. Actually, it was very cheap. Yeah. Hello. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, compared to then, like comparing the two experiences, I'll say I still prefer the the second one, which is the one that happened in twenty twenty two, because you have more community more Nigerians, more people that understand you, understand your plight, understand the issues that you're going through. Or like, you know, the last one where you barely have a lot of Nigerians and everybody is minding their business strictly, strictly. Yeah. But now a lot of people have come in together. We're all trying to navigate through the system together. I prefer this one now compared to my previous experience here. Okay. So like the Nigerian community you had in school, were you like fully part of it? It was just like, and eh, we see, we see, and, you know, just share ideas. So they, we had like a community community. We have a WhatsApp group that is still very functional. And we, you know, that's where you get like, oh, what's happening? How do I, if I have this problem, how do I, you know, get through it? It's a very helpful group as far as I'm concerned, because you know, they, they help you with, okay, I need a cab that will take me to heat through. Somebody has a plug. I need a plumber. Somebody has a plug. I need a DC. Oh, Everybody. okay. But just, you know, there to help each other to make life a bit easy, even though we still have some Judas this day. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we still have some Judas this day, but major, majorly is to help each other, which is good. We have a vibrant community not just in the university even in northampton aside from people that went to uni people nigerians that live here we have a community here we have events october 1st it's always really nice so oh, okay yeah, really good oh wow that's great and i hear that getting an accommodation in the uk is like trying to pass the camel <laughs> Through the eye of a needle. So how true is that? I mean... <laughs> so when I first came to the UK, when I first came to the UK, we stayed in an Airbnb for two months. It was difficult to find a house. And we went to at least 20 viewings, if not more. Oh, wow. The way it works is you view the house, then the landlord says, oh, no, I've taken somebody else. You go and view, no, I've taken somebody else. So it was really stressful and... It was very frustrating. Even this house I currently live in, when we got it, when I came to view it, I just viewed it like it's one of those stories where yeah. <laughs> yes, let's just view it. So when they said, oh, they're going to give you the house, and my husband was asking me, so how does the room look like? I said, I don't know. I didn't really look at it like that. Because I just... <laughs> you expect him. <laughs> but we thank God yeah. that we actually got it. But accommodation is one of the most difficult things to get in the uk very difficult so i always advise people if you have someone you can stay with please don't be don't form i don't want to stay with anybody i can figure mm. it out don't no take the help while you can and try and be useful to them while you're there as well because having accommodation issues is one of the biggest challenges anybody can have especially in a new country so yeah yeah 
Yeah. And how safe is the area you're living in the UK? Is it? Um, yeah. Northampton is not too bad. Although we have a few stabbings here and there for from all these young children. Like most of the stabbings are usually between the ages of 15, 16, 17. Young children, basically. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's yeah. crazy. That's majorly the only thing that's is bad bad it's fairly safe no i don't even you know as much as we say nigeria is we know that it's not really great but nowhere is really safe honestly because recently i think some months ago my neighbors um we um side um windscreen wasn't his windscreen the passenger's window was broken to broken into into and then wow. he pulled, like, some things from the car and all of that so i don't know it's it's not like we have crime a lot but nowhere safe let me just put it yeah 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 Yeah, i totally understand yeah so um how did you get like your current job how how was it like after studies did you i mean how did you apply because i know a lot of people are actually or a lot of students are very very concerned about getting a job there in the uk so I'm going to start off by saying when you enter uni, the first thing is to associate yourself with the right people. Mm-hmm. Now, don't I'm not saying you can't have be friends with everyone and all of that. But make sure you are moving people that are go-getters, are people that want to get ahead, are people that, you know, we are new in the country, but you, you can easily spot that, oh, this person is serious with life and yeah. they want to do things and move ahead. So that's number one. Like, that's my number one because that's what helped me with everything that I have somewhat accomplished after uni. And, you know, we had this group of people where with assessments, you from assessment self, like, you would see that this person, they're serious. They're not looking for people that are going to do the assessments for them or paying. They're not paying people. They're doing the work. Oh, wow. You see how this... Um, yeah, you keep paying people to do your assessment. It's not going to teach you the skills that you need to survive in the UK. Trust uh-uh. me, it's not. Because you need that analytical thinking. You need it for work. You need it. So that was the first step for me. And then as we're approaching towards the end of um, our studies, we're already pushing each other. Have you applied? Do you need, do you need help with your CV? What have you done? You know, we would have birthday parties and then or events and then Towards the end, all of us are just sitting down talking about the next steps in life. Oh, <laughs> this guy, yeah. I'm for this how I did my CV. We send each other our CVs. Oh, this how I've done it. Do it like this. Apply mm, here. Oh, nice. See a job, job that you think somebody can do. You send it to them. It's those are kind of people you need in your, in your life. And I know that a lot of Nigerians will feel like, oh, I can do it by myself. I don't need anybody, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. You're lying. You're mm-hmm. lying. So that was the first thing. When I was now almost done with school i started applying applying to different places i even started with customer care applications first because i wanted a remote job where i would be able to work from home and then fortunately for me i got one in barclays at the time but after a while they rescinded the offer and i think it was because of my visa status because they saw that oh uh my student visa was going to expire soon okay i didn't get the job uh, and then, luckily for us, my husband was able to get sponsorship at his own job. Oh, yeah. wow. Mm-hmm. What does he that do? Was, he's um, a logistics planner. He works in a logistics company um, called Usen. So that's that's what he does. And he's been working with them since April last year. So it's oh, it'll oh, be two okay. years, April next year. So, yeah, he got, he was, we were able to get sponsorship. That's what helped because the visa status was one of the reasons why I was not getting jobs. You know, I, I started applying to other jobs as well. Then when we got the sponsorship, yeah. This one, this job I'm currently doing, I got it off LinkedIn. That's why I always tell people, oh. a lot of people focus on, they focus on uh, Indeed, Read, all total jobs and all the space. LinkedIn is an amazing platform for jobs okay wow linkedin oh wow yes it is especially if you have all your work experiences itemized and your linkedin is optimized meaning that um 
you are you you are able to be seen there's a way they do it that you can people will be seeing you and then you're posting stuff you're liking people's comments you're commenting you know you're engaging people yeah so i just saw the job randomly on there and then i applied it was it's actually a maternity cover so my contract is oh. gonna end in june and i'm hoping that I get I get another job within the organization because it's actually a good organization. I don't want to leave it. Okay. It comes it's because it's a remote job. I don't yeah. have to physically be in the office at all. I do all my mm, work wow. from, from my house, and then um, it just helps me with childcare, which is what I was going for. I don't have to worry about nursery right now. And nursery is a very very expensive. It's, it's expensive, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so before for me the preparation before you get the job is important as well as your interview process so the way they do interviews here is very different from nigeria which is so for interviews here is is formal and then semi-formal right yeah nigeria is straight up um formal yes sir yes ma okay Mm -hmm. sir ma Mm -hmm. oh yeah (laughs) Um, so I could, and it took me a while to learn this. I could have an interview and then I'm speaking to, you know, we, we join the call and then you're exchanging pleasantries. Hi, how are you doing? And then I see, like, maybe I see a guitar at the back of your, from on your background, okay. I can see a guitar. And I can start a conversation and say, oh, do you like music? And the interviewer is like, oh, yes, I went for this. I know how they are. This thing. Yeah, they are very open. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I, I went for this concert. Oh, I also play. And, all, and that's and that's a, already a, an icebreaker. You are already in a chilled, relaxed. It's easier to answer questions that way. Yeah. It's easier to just talk and flow. And one thing I always tell people is people hire who they like, like who they think they can work with. It's not just yeah. your skills. <clears throat> you might be the best at let's say excel and all these analytical things if i don't see myself as being your co-worker if i don't see you as someone i can relate with on a daily basis yeah i would more, most likely not hire you yeah that's true especially if i see especially if i meet a candidate that has your same skill set and is more relatable yeah so that's that's it like it's not just you being rigid and straight and answering questions one way there's no comic relief. There's nothing. You have to know how to throw in all these things as you're doing your interview. It takes a bit of practice because I flopped some at the beginning. Yeah. So okay. at, over time, I just got used to it and got... And, you know, they also start with the jokes. Go with it. Don't be too rigid. I know even... Mm-hmm. Even if the jokes dry, laugh. Laugh. <laughs> laugh. Yeah, laugh. Yeah, at least just to still engage, yeah, you know, that yeah. sense of they humor. You have to they, show it. Yeah, they want one that they like. Anybody can be excellent in everything, <laughs> in other things. But having yeah. that relatable personality, like, oh, I like this person. This person can be someone I can work with on a daily basis. Yeah, it's very, very important. And Oh, um, wow. Yeah. And that thing I learned was just do the work, even if you don't know how to do it. Google is your friend, my dear. Uh-huh. There's so many tasks I've been given, and I didn't know anything. I just do a quick Google search, and I have an idea. Then I take that idea that I have and then ask my colleagues a question. So I just don't go to them and say, oh, they say I should do it. I don't know how to do it. I've even researched on how to do it. Like find out a bit of information first. So you don't go there empty handed and look stupid. Because obviously yeah. you can't know anything. But know a bit about what you need to do. And then go and ask people that somewhat know more. So like it comes like, oh, this person knows this part and they need more yeah. help. Not like this person doesn't even know anything. You look <laughs> clueless. You are helpless. So yeah, that, those are things that have worked for me, like job wise, getting a job, sustaining a job, and just you know, making my money at the end of the month. Yeah, very important. You know, when you when you travel, you are on a student visa. So how long does that visa last? And then you know the time in between to look for a job. And what if the company you get does not you know give you that sponsorship? How would you go about it? All right, so. There are some courses that are two-year courses. So if it's a two-year course, 
and when I say two year course, it's a one year you'll be in Six class months. teach oh. you and all of that and then there's uh, the other second year is called placements where you're like doing an internship with a company so for courses like project management and some other courses they have that two-year program but my own course was just a one-year program because two-year programs are obviously more expensive um so you have one year on your visa right and if your visa if you come in september you finish school september they give you an extension of three. So on your visa, they will always add an extra three months. Okay. Yes. So um, they expect that after, you know, that's the allowance for maybe you need to get your results from school. You need to um, look for a job and all of that. Now, if you are not able to secure a job that has sponsorship, right now i don't know if the rules are going to change because the uk is the uk they have been, they have been moving funny recently <laughs> right now you have what is called um the post-study work visa where they give you a work visa that allows you to work for two years after you have successfully completed your master's successfully okay. in you must pass your courses you must okay. pass it yeah so when you're done with school they give you um that visa which then gives an allowance to work and then during that two years you now find a company that is willing to sponsor you the sponsorship is the ultimate thing anyway you have to get it to be able to remain in the uk so luckily for us we were able to get that straight up because the pathway for us here is you're on a work visa, two year MTA two work visa for five years. Then after that, you can apply for what they call indefinite leave to remain ILR. And then oh, okay. after you've been on ILR for like a year, a year and a half, you can then apply for citizenship. So that's the you know pathway. But if you are not able to get that, you then do the two years after after school, and then you get a sponsorship, and then you continue from there yeah okay oh wow that's great so after you get the certificate of sponsorship after a year you can apply for the il ir oh wow wow that's mm -hmm. good so how long does that last um the ilr is i don't know how, it, how long it lasts because i know that most people once they've been on it for um so ilr is like you don't need to apply for visas anymore right okay that's the indefinite leave to remain it doesn't end so okay after yeah. you've been there for one year plus you've had that status for one year plus you can then apply for yeah, the ultimate of the ultimate the past yeah <laughs> yeah oh wow that's that's great i mean like if you if you finish school you get a job and they sponsor you it's just like boom boom and yeah by the time you know it, you're already um, no, a resident or even a citizen. Oh, wow. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's good. So that means if you want to advise someone trying to come to the UK for studies, well, well, what oh, advice do you have for them? All right now, I, I wouldn't advise anybody to come to the UK for studies because it's only easier when you come with your a, a dependent okay so me coming to school and then my husband was dependent meant that somebody was working another person was schooling it was easy because trust me 20 hours of work would not be able to pay your school fees sustain you the way you want or the way you, even the average way of sustenance except you'll be doing hard cash jobs where you know they're paying you straight up cash yeah it's, it's very it's extremely difficult the best way is to come with a dependent that is focused okay. on taking care of the family, taking care of the bills, taking care so that you can yes, just focus yes. on the school. And then afterwards, either of you can then have the post-study yeah. visa or the work visa. Response. Yeah. Okay. But right now, I don't advise people to come to the UK anymore because the, the, the way the rules are changing is too drastic. And yeah, you don't know which one is going to really affect you. And it's a lot of investment. Coming to the UK, it's not, it's not cheap. Mm -hmm. So, mm -mm. And I heard now... Tinkle, tinkle. 
<laughs> and I heard now you can't even come with a dependent. You have to exactly, the person who is even studying have to be there first, and then later the dependent can join. Um. Well, it depends because this for the student route, there's no there's no dependents. You can't bring in any dependents for the student route right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can't. Oh wow! That's what I was talking about the way the rules are changing so fast. You can't even keep up. You can't. Oh, okay. So I guess I advise people to try other countries, try other places. Because UK right now, it's too risky. It's too risky. Oh wow! That's. Hmm. I know things are really changing. It's not as it used to be before. Because before, things are much more easier. But now, yeah. it's getting more difficult, getting more expensive. And even if you can afford it before, right now, the exchange rates with what we have in Nigeria. <laughs> One pound right now is 1,500. Can imagine. One pound, 1,500. As when I came, was 750, 740, there about. So. That that's double of what it was oh. then. So you can imagine if your tuition so in Naira are, is like I... four million, now it's eight million. <laughs> hey. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. As I, when I came, it was about five of five point five six. So then now it's time to of that. And don't forget that the schools increase their tuition. Yeah. Yeah. One k every year. So yeah, the money is more. The money is really more. Oh wow. So apart from the fees and all that, do you think UK is really a good place to relocate to? Yeah, I think for for family for families, yeah, I always recommend UK. US is for like a single person that wants to really hustle, sharp sharp, make money. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> for me, I'm yeah. single, I'll probably just go there. You know, it's a place where if you are serious with your life, you will make it really fast. But family yeah. wise, US is not. It's not really it because it's a scary place. But... <laughs> yeah, I know most people say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary. But yeah. for the UK, there's still a bit more decorum and all of that. So, yeah. For family, I would recommend the UK. Definitely. Oh, okay. Definitely. Oh, wow. Okay. That's great. I think that you've really touched on most of the points that, you know, our audience that. I mean, our audience would like to hear. And of course, like you mentioned, UK is a good place to come study. But, you know, you just have to be serious. You have to be dedicated. You have to be focused. And like you mentioned, you know, being part of the Nigerian community also helps a whole lot. Because no man is an island. You shine your eye. And you shine your eye. <laughs> shine your eye very well. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah. wow wow that's amazing oh well, well, well i mean <clears throat> but you have like if somebody wants to come study do you think they should go you know like you said there are many agents now that are representing most of these schools in nigeria so it's still better to go through the agent or you can still apply by yourself you can apply you can apply on your own if you have all the right okay. documents, you can apply on your own. Straight up, you can apply on your own. It's not, it's not rocket science. And yeah, because using those agents, you have to pay. Yeah, exactly. Because they just, all they do is just to upload and they monitor the progress of whatever application has been done, which you can do yourself. Just that, no, as little as booking air tickets, we have agents for it. People don't want to do it. <laughs> to, to, to travel out to Abuja, you call agent. But well, something you can do on your by yourself on your. Computer. You just check online so, and that's I, it. Exactly, we're just naturally laid back. We always want people to do things for us. That's why all these agents are now are thriving in Nigeria. In other country, I don't think they have all these people. Just do your thing and and, and... Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. But, yeah, I really don't hear people talking. I mean. 
like when I went to study, I didn't really hear people talking about, oh, we have agents in our country that are actually dedicated to your, you know, um, application process and all that. Yeah. yeah, I don't hear it in other places. It's just us. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. All righty. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Okay, so guys, that's some of the tips and tricks that you get from someone who actually studied and is currently working in the UK. So you can learn from that. As she mentioned, during your studies, you make sure you are serious with it. And when you are done, you make sure that you apply, you know, update your resume, update your CV, you update your LinkedIn account, make sure that it's up to date, put in all your work experiences. And on LinkedIn, there are some parts where you can actually select that you're looking for a job. So your profile can show up for people that are looking for similar roles that you can fill in on LinkedIn and then reach out to you. You can also search for jobs and apply, 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 apply. <laughs> That's, you know, the main, that's the only thing that you can do. And of course, when you get your interview, you know, like she mentioned, you have to be free. You have to be accommodating because there are a lot of people with same skills, but most interviewers would like to get somebody that, you know, they know is very, very relatable, not just to them, but, you know, to the team that you'll be joining at the end of the day. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned one or two things from this video. And if you are currently studying in the UK or you are currently working in the UK, please put in any suggestions, anything you know would help someone that is planning to go study in the UK from their home country. It doesn't have to be Nigeria. It can be from anywhere. As long as you are not from the UK, you are going there to study, you are an international student. So any advice, any encouragement, anything you know that would help an international student in the UK, please put that in the comment section below and we'll be more than happy to read them. And of course, the audience or people who are looking for those kind of information would actually see them. And of course, that would really help them to navigate their way around in the UK. So thank you guys for watching. Stay charming, stay fabulous, stay healthy, and stay blessed. See you next video. Bye.